Welcome to this month's exciting edition of Bowling Showcase, the only show to connect you with everything bowling in the bowling capital of the world, Metro Detroit. I'm your host, Mark Martin, and with me is my co-host, Stephanie Pengsa. Welcome, Stephanie. Hi, Mark. Well, spring is finally here, and even though it's still a little cold out, it won't be long before we'll be enjoying that summer weather. Unfortunately, that also means that the bowling season is coming to a close. That's true, Stephanie. But don't you at home worry. This month we have an exciting, action-packed episode featuring the Women's Series, Junior Masters, Senior Team, State Senior Masters, and a whole lot more. But before we get started, I'd like to thank our host center for this month, Mayflower Lanes in Redford. And later on in the show, we'll take a peek around this family-friendly bowling center and learn about all they have to offer. Okay, Mark, let's get this show rolling and tell us about some of the top stories making bowling news this month. With friends, family, and fellow bowlers cheering him on, David Sueski was awarded his 900 series ring by MD USBC John Vorpagel at Plaza Lanes this month. As you recall, Sueski bowled a 900 series at Plaza Lanes on January 10th, a distinction shared by only 27 other bowlers in 120 years of certified bowling competition and the first in the bowling capital of the world. The rest of the league, you know, I look at them as my extended family also, so, you know, just super grateful that yeah, everyone's happy and excited for me. Congratulations, David. Keep on bowling. Women's Series participant Brandi Remy was awarded her 300-game crystal during this month's Women's Series event. Remy, who's always a tough competitor in the Women's Series events, bowled her second career 300 game back in February. Her first 300 game came back in April 2006. She's just 12 years old at the time, making her the youngest female 300 game shooter. Congratulations, Brandi. And that's all the news you need to know this month in MDUSBC. Now let's jump right into this month's tournament action with a look at our Women's Series event from Vision Lanes in Westland. On Bowling Showcase. The second to last Women's Series event of the season was held at Vision Lanes in Westland on March 13th. This season's Women's Series has been the most competitive season yet and the Cups Point race is really heating up. Last month's runner-up, Brandi Remy of Livonia, tied for top qualifier with 823 on games of 246, 182, 182, and 213. In match play, she beat Sarah Doro of Midland, 206 to 131, and Julio Ocepic of Reese, 203 to 198, to advance to the final match. Blair Blumenscheid of Columbus, Ohio, and Jennifer Pareto of Ferndale tied for the last qualifying spot with 7-16 and had to compete in a one-game roll-off to determine who would move on in the competition. After trading strikes and pin counts, it was Blumenscheid who beat Pareto and earned that last spotted match play. Blumenscheid then went on to beat Mary Wells of Columbus, 165 to 161, Katie Bishop of Westland, 211 to 201, and Samantha Hesley of Detroit, 223 to 166 to advance to the final match against Remy. The final match showcased the competitiveness and skill of the lady bowlers. Each bowler trading off pin count for pin count, fighting each other frame by frame. By the 10th frame, it was still anybody's game to win, but in the end, Remy knocked down the pins she needed and squeaked past Blumenscheid by two pins to win the match, 186 to 184. Both bowlers were pleased with their performances. I'm here with this month's winner, Brandy Remy. Brandy, after a second place finish last month to the person that was in the tie, okay? Mm -hmm. And this month you're up against the person who was in the tie and you beat her. Yeah, they worked their way up there. A uh, little redemption from Invitational last year, but it was a good day overall, absolutely. I worked really hard to get back up to this point, so. Well, you bowled great, Thank top you. qualifier, you and Katie Bishop, top mm -hmm. qualifier, and you ran the table. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was a very good day overall. I've been working hard, looking forward to coming to these, so. It was, it was a grind all day. I mean, I started off with a 140 game, and I was 
very much out of cut. So I just, you know, I got in my mind, I was like, I'm not going to give up. You know, I drove all the way up here. I've been working really hard on my physical game this year. Um, so I, and spares were really crucial today. Um, so I, I kept improving every game. I grinded out a 200 game, um, the third game. And then I was tied for <laughs> 10th. So I had a roll off. Um, and then just kept grinding every match. Every match pretty much came down to the 10th frame now for me. And now let's take a look at the cup point standings leading into the final women's series event next month. First a 300 game, now a women's series win. Brandi Remy is really making a name for herself this season. And don't forget, she's also the current Cup Point standings leader. This really sets the stage for a compelling final Women's Series event next month. With triple points available, it's going to be an exciting finish, but you'll have to wait till next month to see how it all ends up. Okay, Mark, we've got to keep the show rolling, so let's jump right into our next event, the Senior Team Tournament from Pampa Lanes in Ward. Take it away. The Metro Detroit USBC Senior Team Tournament was held over three weekends this month at Pampa Lanes in Warren. The tournament saw 51 teams compete for the $900 first place prize. Each team consisted of five bowlers, all over the age of 55, men or women. Each team in the tournament bowled three games with their total handicap score used to determine a winner at the end of the three-week event. Throughout the tournament, the bowling was competitive, exciting, and boisterous, with team members urging each other to perform at their best. Some team members pushed themselves to near-perfect games, while others stayed competitive by picking up spares and strikes when it counted most. There was laughter, good cheer, good-natured ribbing, and plenty of exceptional bowling over the course of the tournament. But in the end, there could only be one team winning first place and collecting the top prize. And here's how the teams ended up. Congratulations to all of the winners and participants in this year's Senior Team Tournament. The Senior Team Tournament, always a lot of fun and a showcase of top-notch bowling. You know what, I might have to recruit some of those bowlers for my Tuesday night league. Now after a short commercial break, we'll be back with the Junior Masters Tournament. So stick around, we'll be right back with more Bowling Showcase. Owning and operating a bowling center is a unique business, and no one knows it like Sandy Hansel and Associates. We've been buying, selling, and valuing bowling centers for over 30 years. We've sold over 500 centers and valued more than 1,200 centers throughout the United States and Canada. We often assist the purchaser in securing financing, obtaining your liquor license transfer, and avoiding potential pitfalls unique to this business. 
Trust your next Bowling Center transaction to Sandy Hansel & Associates, Bowling's only full-service broker, appraiser, and financial advisors. Visit us at sandyhansel.com. Metro Detroit USBC, your source for everything bowling in the bowling capital of the world. We support USBC certified league and tournament competition. We provide 11 tournaments for all members of our association, including men, women, youth, seniors, scratch, and handicap competition. The top reasons for belonging to the Metro Detroit USBC are having your average recognized, bonding of league funds, rules of the game, assistance in resolving league issues, equipment standards of the game, charities, and awards. Visit us at mdusbc.com. Welcome back. We're having a great time bringing you all the action and excitement of the 2016 MDUSBC bowling season, all right here on Bowling Showcase. And we'd like to thank you at home for watching, participating, and showing why Metro Detroit is the bowling capital of the world. Now bowling, it's really for everybody. Doesn't really matter your age, your gender, or your ability. Whether you're a pro, league bowler, you know what, or just having fun on a Friday night, bowling, it's a lifelong activity. You can have fun, be competitive, and make lifelong friends. When was the last time you went bowling? Well, what are you waiting for? Get to your local bowling center and have some fun. Good advice, Stephanie. Okay, now let's get back to bowling action with our Junior Masters Tournament from Airway Lanes in Waterford. It was standing room only as 91 junior bowlers participated in the Metro Detroit USBC Junior Masters Tournament held at Airway Lanes in Waterford. Friends, family, and fans packed the house on this Saturday to watch Metro Detroit's best bowlers aged 8 to 20 compete for the coveted Junior Masters title. And what an exciting day of bowling it was. Starting with six games of qualifying, the boys and girls faced off in their respective divisions for the chance to move on to the stepladder finals and the ultimate prize. On the girls' side, Madsen Breen of Warren was the top qualifier with a six-game total of 11-21, which put her in the stepladder finals and gave her the opportunity of resting while the rest of the finals field moved on to single-game stepladder matches. The girls' stepladder finals kicked off with Trina Gladstone of Lake Orion beating Samantha Gaynor of New Baltimore 197-193. Then it was Kerry Malloy of Sandusky who beat Gladstone 191 to 129 to face off against Breen in the final. As the final game began, both bowlers got a feel for the lane conditions and tried to remain focused on the prize. The two girls bowled a strong and competitive game, each getting a series of strikes and spares. In the end, Breen proved too much for Malloy and beat her 193 to 141. Breen was happy with her first tournament win. Um, this is my first win um, for anything, so this is really, really exciting. I mean, I've always come in like, you know, runner up or like fourth or third, but this is like my official first win, so I'm really, really, I'm really happy. Um, I felt on. I felt I was better than what I actually bowled in at states. I haven't, I actually haven't bowled in a week, so I just like went yesterday and I'm like, oh. Just come in and have a really good attitude, and I guess I did that today, so. On the boys' side, it was last year's winner, Ryan Winters of Livonia, who was the top qualifier with a six-game total of 13-21, earning him the top seed for the stepladder finals. The boys' stepladder began with Justin O'Shaughnessy of Canton beating Jacob Kirsten of Clarkston, 192 to 188. In the next stepladder match, O'Shaughnessy fell to Marcus McLean of Lincoln Park, 179 to 129. McLean, who qualified fourth with 1192, then went on to beat second qualifier Jordan Bryan of Detroit, 199 to 192, to advance to that title match against Winters. Winters, after awaiting his final opponent, went into the final with all the confidence and determination of a man on a mission. His mind set on a second consecutive Junior Masters title. But it was Marcus McLean who focused in on what he needed most and took control of the match. Ultimately winning the title with a 215-159 win over Winters. 
felt pretty confident. Bowling MJ May last weekend, pretty tough shot. And practicing on the pattern gave me pretty good confidence. Yeah, they were pretty tough, especially after they carry down. Very rough. Congratulations to Machen Breen and Marcus McLean on their Junior Masters titles. And now, Mark has a special guest to tell us about our host center for this month, Mayflower Lanes in Redford. Take it away, Mark. Vicki, thanks for having us this month on Bowling Showcase. We really appreciate it. You got a nice center here. What kind of things you got going on this summer? You know, we always have really good league bowling here at the Bowling Center during the summer months. Competitive, fun leagues, ball leagues, uh, adult youth. Great time to have a fundraiser still. And of course, Tiger game at the end of the season, we're representing. That's right. But you know, the Tigers, they're gonna go all the way this year. That's what I heard That's from right. you. I That's heard right. it from oh. you. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for having us this month. We really appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Let's roll. Thanks, Mark. And a big thank you to Mayflower Lanes. Now it's time to take a look at the Senior Queens Tournament from Shore Lanes, right here on Bowling Showcase. Sandy Schultz of Macomb was the winner in the Metro Detroit USBC Senior Queens Tournament with a 195 to 185 triumph over Krista Winbigler of Macomb at Shore Lanes in St. Clair Shores. Schultz, who is familiar to bowling showcase viewers as one of the top bowlers in the season-long women's series, was the top qualifier for the stepladder finals with a four-game total of 918. Winbigler, she was the second qualifier of the stepladder finals with 911. Winbigler advanced to the finals with a 251 to 195 victory over two-time defending champion Carmen Allen of Highland Park. In the final match, both women played well and competitively, but it was Schultz who proved victorious in the end and claimed this year's title. Congratulations to Sandy Schultz on her 2016 Senior Queens win. Next, it's time to boost your bowling IQ when we return with more Bowling Showcase. Three hundred isn't just a number, it is our destination. Shouting at a ball will make it strike more. Nothing is as satisfying as hurling dangerously heavy spears at stationary objects and watching X's fill the frames. You know it, we know it. So here's to the ballers, the lane dwellers, the alley cats. We are TVA. Tonight we bowl. For all the latest DBA product information, visit your local pro shop or check out damngoodbowling.com. Welcome back to Bowling Showcase. Now it's time to boost your bowling IQ with Metro Detroit Bowling and Resource Center's goal coach, Lou Marquez. So how many of us suffer from inconsistency at the foul line? Maybe a tug shot, maybe releasing the ball right, but not necessarily hitting our target all the time. Maybe we're rearing up, popping up at the finish position. Maybe it's even a subtle flaw of dropping the ball prematurely. A lot of this can be fixed by just understanding what's needed at the finish position, and that's called proper balance. Today we're going to talk about how to create proper balance at the finish position, but also look at how it's fundamentally created so that you can get back on track and create consistency with your swing, your accuracy, and direction with your release. So let's get started. With the help of Coach Rebecca Keegan, 
we're going to identify some problems and help you get back on the right track. Okay, so we're going to identify this problem where she's constantly falling off her shots and sometimes maybe some of you at home may suffer from the same symptoms. One of the things that we want to work on is really identifying where that trail leg needs to move to identify good solid fundamentals of balance. So Coach Rebecca Keegan, could you do me a favor and get into a good finish position here? And what we're going to identify is the movement of this trail leg. We want to make sure that this knee is further enough back, but not stiff or straight, but has good flexibility in this knee flex, as well as this front knee, um, but have some separation between the two. A lot of times when they're too close together, it forces our upper body to be too top heavy and we can actually fall over, creating some wobbling or, or, or shaking going on. Or sometimes our trail leg is not wide enough, as we, we notice that she's struggling right now to maintain balance because it's too straight, too much in line. We want to have a separation. We want to have some width to the actual movement of the trail leg. So let's move this trail leg back. Let's open it up this area here. We're going to open up a few inches in between the knees and a little bit of width in through here. This allows her to create good posture. She'll then take her balance arm, her opposing arm, where the ball is on the opposite side of her ball side, and she's going to use it as a counterbalance. Now her body is structured fully to create good balance to deliver that shot. So there you have it. You just learned how to create better balance through your physical game and create the consistency needed from shot to shot. What's most important is you're going to create better control of direction. With great balance comes consistency. With consistency comes score. So there you have it. You just upped your bowling IQ. If you want to learn more about your physical game, come and visit us at the Metro Detroit Bowling and Resource Center. For The Center, I'm Coach Lou Marquez. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Lou. We'll have more tips, tricks, and techniques to boost your bowling IQ next month on Bowling Showcase. Now let's take a look at the prestigious 2016 Michigan State Senior Masters Tournament from Westland Bowl. One hundred and thirteen of the state's best senior bowlers gathered at Westland Bowl to compete in the 2016 Michigan State Senior Masters Tournament held on April 2nd and 3rd. The bowlers competed in six games of qualifying, with the top 31 qualifiers plus defending champion Ernie Segura moving on to match play. As expected, the bowling throughout the tournament was of the highest caliber, even under very demanding lane conditions. Pete Kazmierczyk of Warren led the qualifying by 69 pins with a six game total of 1377. The field of 113 bowlers averaged 186 during the six games of qualifying, with the top 32 bowlers averaging 202. As match play began, the bowlers struggled finding their shot on a very challenging oil pattern. Frustration showed on many bowlers as they fought for every shot and every pin having immense difficulty finding a path to the pocket. Hall of Fame bowler Harry Sullins of Chesterfield, who qualified 25th, eked out wins match after match to stay in the winner's bracket. He triumphed over Rick Wayne of Westland, 494 to 447, Dwayne Anderson of Southfield, 419 to 393, Joe Krajenki of Clinton Township, 384 to 335, and Larry Walker of Garden City, 481 to 389, to advance to the championship match. Bo Gergen of Sanford, who qualified 10th, won his first two matches against Dan Mayer of Waterford, 389 to 328, and John Chapman of Brampton, Ontario, 446 to 408, before losing to Larry Walker, 471 to 416, and falling into the loser's bracket. Once in the loser's bracket, Gergen still struggled with his shot, but was able to win his matches over Ray Van Team of Gladwin, Joe Belicki of Lake Orion, Joe Krajenki, and George Forsey of Milford. And finally, a revenge win over Larry Walker to climb out of the loser's bracket and face off against Sullins in the final match. Facing off on the most notorious lane pair of the tournament, Sullins and Gergen had a seesaw battle frame by frame. 
Eventually, fatigue and changing lane conditions started to grind on Gergen, while Sullins, with steely-eyed determination, continued his calm approach and mastery of the lanes. In the end, it was Sullins' day to shine, and he continued his winning ways by beating Gergen 435 to 394 in the two-game match and taking the first prize and the title. Well, you know, you got the extra bowlers on the lanes and uh, guys crossing left, right, and trying to play your own angle. And then, of course, uh, you get off to a rough start. I didn't bowl bad. It was just a lot of ring tens and a lot of nine counts and then uh, a bad shot or two. So a lot of time, you, you know, changed to a different bowling ball and uh, kind of bowled okay. But I told a few of the guys it was really tough because I got to the sixth gate, tenth frame, and I actually had to have a strike to make the cut. Otherwise, I missed the cut by two pins. So, I mean, it, hey, great, it worked out. And then, uh, of course, today you go undefeated and uh, kind of makes up for the last four years because third last year, second the year before, and third the year before, uh, you know, you hate knocking on the door because you don't know how many locks are on it. Well, this year, I think I had all the keys to open the locks. Uh, it, it's great, uh, let alone to win in Michigan State. Of course, there's so many great bowlers. Same thing, you know, here in the metro Detroit area, there's so many great bowlers. And, uh, I, you know, I, I struggled in the uh, city senior masters uh, a match or two. And, uh, of course, this kind of makes up for it. And then uh, with that complimentary spot for the USBC National in Las Vegas, it's like, hey, oh, boy. <laughs> Congratulations to Harry Sullins on his dominating performance and win at this year's Michigan State Senior Masters. Well done, Harry. That's about all the time we have for this month's show. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Why don't you connect with us at Bowling Showcase on Facebook and YouTube, or email us at bowlingshowcase at gmail and let us know what you think. Remember, you can watch rebroadcasts of this show and more at mdusbc.com. For my co-host, Stephanie Penksa, I'm Mark Martin, and we'll see you next time from the bowling capital of the world on, on Bowling, bowling Showcase. Showcase.